so thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak here today. Um, as already mentioned in the introduction, um, sustainable cultivation of medical cannabis is something that's really important to us um, at Chacana. Um, we've had very, very positive experiences with cultivating cannabis um, outdoors in Jamaica. I believe there is a lot that other countries, especially countries um, in warm climates, can learn um, from the Jamaican experience. Um, as far as it relates to the outdoor cultivation of um, a product that can then be exported. Now, um, I'm going to start with a little video. As we all know, cannabis has been grown um, outdoors in many different parts of the world for thousands of years um, and reportedly has actually been one of the first plants to be domesticated by humans. After cannabis had been widely outlawed in the 1930s, people around the world continued to cultivate the plant. However, in order to avoid um, the risk of being detected, a lot of people switch their cultivation indoors. And that's really where that idea of growing cannabis indoors using um, high intensity discharge lighting, heating, ventilation comes from. Um, it's a product of prohibition. Another method that's used to cultivate cannabis, uh, greenhouses, again, something that's mostly done in cold and temperate climates. Um, and some of the cannabis greenhouses, I mean, I find the numbers mind boggling. There are cannabis greenhouses in Canada that are in excess of 1.5 million square feet in size. And some of them actually have price tags over 150 million US dollars. Our preferred method of cultivation is and has always been outdoor. Um, we believe that you know, indoor and greenhouse cultivation produce some very aesthetically pleasing cannabis flower, but we're actually able to get the highest yield at the lowest cost, the most interesting terpene profiles, and I would argue the highest quality cannabis from outdoor cultivation in the plant's natural um, habitat. Now let's talk a little bit about the ecological footprint of uh, cannabis cultivation. And why does that matter? Well, because consumers care. So according to a global Nielsen survey, 80% of consumers said that it's extremely important to them that companies that they buy from are conscious of the environment. 73% of consumers would change their habits and 66% of consumers are actually willing to pay a premium for sustainably produced products. Now, as far as cannabis cultivation is concerned, um, there's a really good study by the Global Footprint Network that compares 
the um, impact, the ecological impact of cannabis cultivation uh, between outdoors, greenhouse, and indoor cultivation. So the ecological footprint of the cultivation of one kilogram of cannabis flower at an outdoor farm in Colombia, South America is about 10 uh, global square meters. For greenhouse cultivation, it's about eight times that. And then to cultivate indoors, this one is from um, a farm in Colorado in the US, um, it's almost 400 times the ecological footprint of outdoor cultivation of medical cannabis. Now, what does outdoor cultivation mean for your bottom line? Well, as you can imagine, less energy used means less emissions and also means less money spent. Um, as a matter of fact, we only use about 0.07 kilowatt hours per gram of cannabis that we produce at our farm in Jamaica. Most of that is for ventilation of clone rooms and other facilities. We don't need any major lighting. We don't need any heating. We just grow plants in their natural habitat. Now, because of that, of course, um, our cost per gram of medical cannabis is significantly lower than the cost that you would um, be able to achieve in an indoor or greenhouse setting. And not only that, because we actually don't have to build uh, large indoor facilities or large greenhouses, our CapEx, so the cost to actually build our facilities, um, is significantly lower as well. Now there's one um, common misconception about outdoor grown cannabis, and this is actually a question that I get asked um, quite a lot. A lot of people seem to believe that outdoor grown cannabis does not achieve the same quality levels um, that indoor grown product achieves. Now that's actually not true. First of all, one has to distinguish between two different markets. So there's a market for cannabis flower that's to be consumed as flower, and then there's a market for cannabis extract. Now, if I want to sell cannabis flower directly to patients as medicine, and I want that product to be an EU GMP product, then yes, I have to cultivate either in an indoor facility or in a greenhouse. However, if I want to sell cannabis extracts, so anything from vaporizers to oils to um, soft gels, et cetera, et cetera, I can cultivate outdoors and then extract in an EU GMP certified extraction facility and still get the same quality and product. Now let's talk a little bit about the cannabis extraction market. <clears throat> So, as far as the uh, margins are concerned that you're able to achieve in the extract market as compared to flour, they're actually a lot more um, interesting. So, margins for flour are about 30 to 50 percent, whereas margins for extracts range from 65 all the way to 75 percent. The extract market is also growing a lot more quickly than the flower market. This is especially true in um, certain places such as um, Australia um, and other um, countries in, in Asia and, and in Europe that are starting to heavily focus on cannabis extracts rather than um, smokable cannabis flower. Now, Doctors, when we speak to doctors and to pharmacists, especially um, in Germany and other European markets, they really prefer extracts as well. With extracts, you get a wide range of uh, applications. So you can either take them sublingually, orally, you can use them uh, topically. There's just so much you can do with cannabis extracts. Additionally, um, extracts are highly consistent. So whenever I give a flower product to a patient, there's always going to be some variation in terms of the active ingredients in that flower. Flowers are, cannabis flowers are just never going to be exactly the same because at the end of the day, they're a botanical product and the active ingredient levels range somewhat. With extracts, I always get the exact same consistent product, which of course makes it a lot easier to dose as well. Now, in terms of what type um, of extracts, um, 
you should be focused on producing. Um, at Chacana, we've had very positive experiences with uh, full spectrum extracts, so the entire plant in a bottle. Um, the upside of that is that the patient gets to experience the entire entourage effect, um, but without the downside of actually smoking flower products. Now, how have we gone about um, designing a vertically integrated cannabis platform um, for outdoor cultivation and then ex ex exports of um, an EU GMP certified product? I think this is something that could be quite interesting to a few um, African countries as well. Um, a lot of it depends on R&D and plant engineering. So when we first started cultivating in Jamaica, we actually um, used some local cultivars. We imported a lot of different cannabis cultivars, and we then started an extensive uh, breeding program in the course of which we ended up with about five or six different cultivars. Um, which grow really well in our climate and at the same time give us those uh, consistent cannabinoid profiles that we want um, for mass scale production. Another thing of course is manufacturing and product R&D. So we spend quite a lot of time on uh, developing various products. We run our own um, extraction and formulation facility and what we end up with are um, branded and white label products which we currently um, export to um, the European Union and have also exported some to Canada in the past. All right, what's the takeaway from this session? And this is actually perfect timing because I'm just about out of time. Um, well, first of all, quality of the product. Um, Medical cannabis does not have to come from indoor or greenhouse um, facilities. That's something that is really, really important to me. Um, I've heard that in, in South Africa, it looks as if um, outdoor cultivation is not going to be allowed initially either. I believe that's a mistake. I believe countries, especially in a climate like the one that you're experiencing here, need to um, take advantage of that climate and need to um, cultivate outdoors. Sustainability, another very important topic, especially in um, the current climate. Um, it's important to be able to provide your consumers with a product that's grown sustainably and that has um, as small of an ecological footprint as possible. And last but not least, profitability. Outdoor grown product is always going to be more profitable than indoor grown product. Um, all right, I'm going to stop right here and hand it back to you. Thank you so much, everyone. If there are any questions, please feel free to just come up and chat with me.